This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about how Bitcoin is not a tame lion. You'll see in a minute what this means. I'm talking about Aslan from the Chronicles of Narnia, and the quote from the Narnia Chronicles about Aslan was, of course he isn't safe, but he is good. He is not a tame lion. And I've always thought this was also a very good description of, of Bitcoin as well. Bitcoin is not a tame lion. It's the apex predator of money. Bitcoin is very weird. It's very counterintuitive, especially when you first encounter it. And it's very volatile, but it's also strangely benevolent and dependable like Aslan. You get a new block every 10 minutes. You and I are crazy and emotional and impatient and we're focused on the short term. But Bitcoin is very patient and rational and beautiful. And it forces us also to, to focus on the long term. Bitcoin keeps chugging out new blocks a little bit like one of these beautiful medieval clocks. And it really is sort of a digital, uh, a modern digital invention that I think is quite as beautiful as one of these. We're going to talk a little bit more about what's happened in 2021. But what we've really learned is that the Bitcoin network is very strong. It's dependable. It's resilient. And it marks the passage of the days of our lives every 10 minutes. Bitcoin makes fools out of all of us, and yet it teaches us these very important lessons. And just a few of them are value your wealth in Bitcoin. Think 10 generations ahead. Don't just think 10 days ahead. Live a low time preference life where you're focused, you're making sacrifices in the present in order to help out your future self and your descendants as well. Eschew or avoid consumerism. When you begin to want a desire to accumulate more Bitcoin, it really changes your priorities in terms of what you buy at the store and how much money you spend and how much money you save. And I think this is one of the great things about Bitcoiners is uh, they tend not to be very materialistic. It, by contrast, altcoiners, you see how they behave with their Lambos, etc. Bitcoin also teaches us to take care of our bodies, take care of our loved ones. And finally, it teaches and shows us the way how to store our wealth in that secure Bitcoin vault. Bitcoin is a digital vault and you hold your own keys and it's very, very safe. And your wealth, the money that you've earned by sacrificing your time, by sitting in traffic, by being away from your wife and kids or husband and kids, it's, when you store it in Bitcoin, it's beyond the greedy reach of politicians and central bankers and people who can uh, tax them, tax it, who can print more money and dilute you and basically other thieves. Coming into this current bull market, there were a lot of articles like this, is Bitcoin dead? And I think this is a Forbes article, so obviously fairly mainstream. I think it's amazing to see the sort of headlines that we saw this year coming out of that sort of that bearishness that Bitcoin, a lot of people literally a few years ago, believe that Bitcoin was dead. This year was the first year to see a country become the first country, El Salvador, to accept Bitcoin as legal tender. In El Salvador, if you go there, you can go to McDonald's and pay using Bitcoin. You can go to Starbucks and pay using Bitcoin. And so El Salvador really forced the hands of a lot of these uh, multinational corporations to start accepting Bitcoin. So it's, a, it's very important for all of those reasons. This year, we also saw Tesla buy $1.5 billion in Bitcoin. Uh, obviously, we've seen all of the uh, tremendous buying of Bitcoin that Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy have been doing. We also had rough times with China's war on Bitcoin, China kicking out the Bitcoin miners and, and banning other forms of the usage of Bitcoin. But what was really, really striking was how quickly Bitcoin block, uh, bounced back. And if you do the thought experiment, what would happen if 50, let's say that Google was completely based in China or 50% based in China, and imagine the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, told Google they needed to get out and they had to somehow get 50% of their servers out uh, overnight or in a really short period of time, there would definitely be some downtime on the Google network and the way it functions and crawls the web and provides search results, etc. But the really amazing thing, and we have to remind ourselves of this, is that the Bitcoin network did not go down at all this year. I don't think it's gone down since 2013, and that was when it was a much smaller asset class. But even with all this geopolitical, these, these attacks on Bitcoin, the second major economy in the world attacking Bitcoin, uh, there was no downtime in uh, no time, downtime on the Bitcoin network. Blocks took a little bit longer for a couple of weeks. But other than that, Bitcoin mining itself 
and the hash rate of Bitcoin, which is a measurement of the security of Bitcoin, has completely recovered in just a, a matter of months from the Chinese ban. We can see here that the hash rate bottomed out in, uh, in July this year and has now gone right back up to where it was before China banned it. So Bitcoin is this very, very resilient creature indeed that not even the Chinese communists can stop. I thought this was a great uh, Christmas card from Ricardo Salinas, who's a uh, famous Mexican billionaire. His Christmas message, uh, it's funny that his tree is gold, but his Christmas me message has to do with digital gold. Stay away from fiat money. It's fake money made of paper and lies that central banks are printing more than ever invest in Bitcoin. This was the year we also saw continued money printing. The M2 money supply has increased over 40% over the last two years. This is the largest two-year increase ever. So it increased 25% in 2020 and 11% so far. And when you do the compounding, you get to uh, you get to 40%. Also, the Fed's balance sheet obviously continued to grow as they printed money and bought more assets. The Fed's balance sheet came into the year at around $7.3 trillion, And as we exit the year, it's up to eight point, almost $8.8 uh, trillion. And this is with the taper happening. The tapering doesn't mean that they stop buying. It just means that they buy less every month. And we'll see, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how long they can do that before uh, stocks really sell off. Another interesting tweet here from Bitcoin Magazine looking at historical Bitcoin prices on Christmas. And we can see that there have been some there have been some different difficult periods for for hodlers. For example, the price of Bitcoin on Christmas two years after the the price in uh, December of 2013. So the price in December of 2015 was was almost 50 percent down uh, from where it had been two years earlier. And yet, just you fast forward two years, and all of a sudden it's a, it's a two orders of magnitude higher. It's in the 16 uh, the 16 thousands. And the pattern continues. Just this year, we've gone from uh, we closed uh, last year, you know, in the twenty twenty thousands, and now we're in the forty thousands. Bitcoin was at, at fifty thousand, almost fifty one thousand, on Christmas Day of this year. It's also helpful to keep in mind who have been, who really has been the apex predator of money over the years. And you can see Bitcoin. There are many problems with using market cap as a measurement of this, which I've talked about in other videos. That being said, you still can't deny and see where Bitcoin is. And it's fun to look at places number two and number three and how they change. One year they're XRP, one year they're uh, Bcash, one year they're Litecoin, etc. And uh, Bitcoin just maintains its place at the top as the apex predator, not just of, of money in general, but of cryptocurrencies. Because Bitcoin is very, very different from every other cryptocurrency. It really should be in its own in, in its own class. Another thing I forgot to point out that happened maybe a week ago was that we we passed the 90% point of Bitcoin mining, which means that less than 10% of the Bitcoin supply is left to be mined. This is actually incredible. We can see here in the Clark Moody dashboard, uh, the percentage issue, this is where uh, the percentage issue, this is where you would see it. Uh, looks like it's not highlighted, but right here, 90, we're currently above 90% issued. We're at uh, 18.9 million Bitcoin on our way to 21 million. And obviously three or 4 million, maybe even 5 million Bitcoin have been lost. So this is a much scarcer asset than even you would know by looking at Moody's uh, dashboard. Finally, wanted to finish with a couple tweets from Plan B. This is the his infamous and famous stock to flow model. We can see that for much of this year, we've been scraping along the bottom of the one standard deviation band. I, I like Plan B's comments. He says, I use models to protect myself from emotions. Right now, most people, including myself, fear a further decline of Bitcoin's price and want to sell. But the stock to flow model, which I should point out, has still not been invalidated. We will know next year whether it's been invalidated or not. Um, and more on that to come. But the, bit, the stock to flow model shows Bitcoin is at the low end of the 50K to 200K one standard deviation band. That's what this, this darker blue color is. And when it's at the bottom of the band, it's a, it's a buy signal. Likewise, he says, once we get up to 200K at the top end, we're all going to be feeling like Bitcoin will rise forever, but then it will have a temporary uh, bounce uh, back down as, as happened in 2017 and 2014 when it became overbought. Hard to tell how this will play out. Again, no one knows. His follow-up tweet 
uh, is in response to people who say that this bandwidth is just too wide, the one standard deviation bandwidth. According to his model, Bitcoin should really be spend most, most of its time right now between 50K and 200K. Uh, and this does feel a little bit wide. It's a little bit like predicting that the weather tomorrow is going to be rainy, sunny, or windy, or, or something very general like that. But it's still, I think it still is helpful. As he points out in the last cycle, the stock to flow model average was $7,000 with a one standard deviation band of 3,500 to 14,000 was pretty uh, pretty good predictor back then. And what's really exciting, obviously, for all of us, if this model holds, is that the next cycle band will show Bitcoin bouncing between $500,000 per Bitcoin and $2 million per Bitcoin. We'll see what happens in 2022. This bull cycle has definitely been weird. No one knows what's coming next year. But the one thing that I think we can all be very certain of is that this is the decade of the great monetary reset. It's already happening. Things have been really weird for the past two years as the wheels begin to come off of the current financial system. And I think it's definitely about to get much weirder as governments panic, impose more and more controls, print more and more money, blame inflation on individuals and corporations rather than their own money printing. And this is going to create a lot of strains in the political system as well as the economic system. So I would ask you, are you ready for this? Do you understand what's happening with this reset? Or are you still being distracted by dog coins and NFTs and all of this uh, all of this garbage, which is just in a completely different class from Bitcoin? It's important to, to learn and to start valuing your wealth in Bitcoin. Rather than checking the price of Bitcoin every day, remind yourself one Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. That is the price of Bitcoin. And its fiat price will be realized eventually much, much higher in terms of its purchasing power but once you start thinking in Bitcoin, you're no longer uh, you're no longer bothered by the the volatility of the market. Again, Bitcoin is not a tame lion, and so it's not going to be a gentle market that's going to make you rich. It's going to be like white riding a, a bucking bronco or something like that. It's important to keep dollar cost averaging if you can. Uh, stack sats, as the saying is, hold your own private keys. Don't leave your coins on Coinbase or BlockFi or Kraken or Gemini or Strike or anywhere else. Learn how to withdraw your Bitcoin. Hold it on a hardware wallet. I have many videos about this on my channel. And hold your own private keys. If you leave your Bitcoin on the exchange, you, you risk losing it. And you also open up the Bitcoin ecosystem to various uh, threats by having Bitcoin so concentrated and centralized. As I said, stop watching the price of Bitcoin. One Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. Turn off your screens. Get out in nature, especially during this holiday period. Spend time with your loved ones because the only thing scarcer than Bitcoin really are the days of our lives. And it's important to, it's important to stay focused on this and not get distracted uh, by all the, price, the, all the price volatility and waste our lives staring at our screens. I want to wish you all a really happy new year. It's been a joy to spend so much time with all of you this year. And I really want to thank all of you as well. This channel would be nothing without all of your help, your ideas, your, con your contributions, your wonderful comments, and the inspiration that you give me. So I'm going to take the next uh, next couple of days off to spend more time with the family and maybe do some do some deep reading and some deep thinking. So I'll see you on, I believe it's January 3rd on Monday in 2022. This has been a really, this year has gone by so quickly and I, I really look forward to seeing what the new year will bring for Bitcoin and for all of us. So I wish you a very happy and prosperous new year and I'll see you in a few days. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a very happy new year, and I'll see you on Monday.